What is up, Tadpoles, and welcome to a uh, new mini series that me and Spades are going to do. We're going to do a VGC drafting um, series about how to prepare for draft, how to prepare for team building, and how to actually play um, your draft games. So, say hi, Spades. Hello. Hello, it is I, Spades. <laughs> it is I. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's just hop into it. So, first you gotta take into account your pick in the draft. Obviously, first pick is technically the best, and last pick is technically the second best, because you can uh, get two mons consecutively. Um, when, you're, when you're last, you do that the first time and every time, but when you're first, you only do that the second time. Uh, the second time around, obviously, because uh, the way it works is a snake draft, and you go up and down. So yeah, yeah, it changes kind of how you like those two slots. Obviously, first you want to pick something solid, but then if you when you get back to you picking pairs is, or like not really pairs, but like synergistic picks is oftentimes what you're looking to do in these slots. Right. So like for you example, take advantage. Yeah, for example, you want to get two different types, or you want to pick up a, like a combo. That's what you would be doing well in these two slots. Right, and as you go down in the tiers, you can fill in the gaps. But um, there are exceptions, obviously, and if you do see something that you specifically want for a specific strat, and you think somebody's going to snipe it, um, let's say like Escavalier is a pretty good Pokemon, but it's in like a lower-ish tier, so you might as well snipe it because it's a pretty good Pokemon, and you don't want other people to get it. Yeah, but it is also important to pick something, like, that's why you don't want to pick that first, you want to do that later on. Right. It, like, I would say, in the first round, you want to pick something that is flexible. Yeah. Mostly, some... because if you go all in on something early on... And then somebody snipes then, you, then you're, you're screwed. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like, that's why you see some of the best picks in draft are, like, Dragapult, Whimsicott, because they can do so many different things. Mm -hmm. which allows your team to go in various directions. Right, exactly. And, and they can pair up with a bunch of other Pokemon that aren't, like... Yeah, you're not limited to one or two Pokemon that they can pair up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you should look for easy strategies. Like Spade said, um, you want to pick up, like, a, a combo. So Weather is a good uh, instance of a combo. So something like a Weather Setter and a Weather Abuser. Something with Swift Sim, Slush Rush, Chlorophyll, or Sand Rush, obviously, to take advantage of the weather. You could also use, like, Sand Veil or, uh, what is it, Water <laughs> water Veil uh, or whatever. Snow Cloak is one. Snow Cloak, Rain right. Dish. Rain Dish. But obviously the... Solar the, Power. Yeah. Like... The, uh, the speed boosting uh, abilities are probably your best bet for Weather Abusers. <laughs> Then we got Terrain yeah. with Unburden. Um, yeah, you usually want to use a, um, a Terrain Setter with an Unburden user just because um, you want to take advantage of the Terrain as much as possible and it just gives you another option for you to, um, for your opponent to have to prepare for. Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of the time Rillaboom is one of the first picked mons in draft and if you get lucky enough to get Rillaboom, picking something up in low tier with Unburden is oftentimes a great strategy because well, we'll talk about lower tiers later, but yeah, making use out of your picks is important. So, just understanding like this simple strategy can make your draft so much better. Right. Also, you you, you have to consider um, things that that are like straight up obvious, like beat up justified, water move plus colossal, wheezing Regigigas, things like that. Um, if you can pick those up like early or early ish, or even if late game uh, you see that nobody's picked them up then um, it could be a game changer in some situations and having that straight up out of the gate things that you can lead and that you know are good like obviously weather, terrain, things like that we weakness policy strategies are also good but to have these easy strategies that you can just pick up and, and recognize that they're they're good and this is what they do and this is how they work so it's just, yeah, it's just good to have another thing about the strategies is oftentimes you'll get these these combinations in the, like the end picks so like 1 in 16 because if you pick up Regigigas, pick four, and two people want to be cheeky and pick up both Weezings, then you're kind of hosed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's better to, I'm not saying don't pick Regigigas fifth, if, unless you really want to, but Love. saying you're far, it, it's going to be far better for you if you can, like if you're a lower, or like an end pick, mm -hmm. to get these combinations. Right. Because let's say you're last place, then you have two picks. Or let's say you're, you're second to last. So 
you're, it's you, and then the last person gets to pick twice, and then it's you again. So it's much easier for you to get those picks. Another thing to emphasize is you gotta look for type synergy. Obviously there's Fire, Water, Grass core, Dragon, Seal, Fairy core, and some other well-known cores that have been proven to work like Nut and ZHG, or ZGH, or whatever, whatever it is, GH, whatever. Z, <laughs> Z H G, for those British people out there. Um, and you want to try and not have overlapping weaknesses so that you can make defensive switch-ins if you need to. Yeah, and it, it's it's important to understand your your type charts, right? Because if you get a team that's really weak to fire, you you need to cover that somehow, or you need to adjust accordingly, yeah. like your play style. Cause I've seen a lot of teams go down. Because they're they weak have to one, one type killer weakness. Yeah, one, we have one type weakness, and then that type just mows through their whole team, and they just lose because yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we can talk about low tier mons. Now low tier mons are interesting because um, a lot of people say, "Oh, pick up your low tier mons earlier because they're not a lot of good ones." Some people are like, "Nah, it's, it's fine if you leave it for the end." But um, what we think is that you you just have to find the low tier mods that fit in the in the niches that you want, and you have to find that obviously you have to find ones that are good, but you have to make sure that they have some sort of niche in your team, whether it be support moves, whether it be status, whether it be some sort of redirection, <laughs> ally switch. <laughs> Hate that move. We don't speak of that. We don't. We don't speak. Uh, any there's a lot of fast low tier mods with stat drop moves like snarl or. Charm, Eerie Impulse. Right. These obscure like, moves a lot of that are actually that pretty good. That, and it's like, because those can give you some support like on your team and actually be useful. Right. Like where, I have a Where we're saying is you don't want to pick up like Audino, for example, because there's really no use for Audino. It gets Wish, but, Protect, Regenerator. That's about it. <laughs> Trick Room, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So like what we're saying is if you're going to pick a tier 5 on, make it something that you can put on, place onto a team. So make it, treat it as if it was one of your other picks. Right, that it can, it, you want it to actually work in some situation. You don't want it to just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> you want to actually use it. Yeah. Like that's the point. Otherwise, what's the point? Like I've having? used Shellos in a draft league before. Oh my god. <laughs> like I brought it to a game and made use out of it. Because it has Storm Drain and Storm Drain works in certain exactly. situations. Exactly. And I've used Galvantula and Galvantula is like a tier 5 pick, which is the lowest tier. Yeah. And it's, it's very good. Now cause... there's some very good solid picks in low tier, to name right. a few. Like if you have a Raincore, Dreadnought is a fabulous one to pick up. Because it got Swift uh, Swim. Mobile has Intimidate, which is a very good ability. And then BGM is one of the better trick room setters in, t in the bottom tier. Yeah. Also so hits like a truck with tier. analytic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there are so many like good low tier mods. Yeah, you just have to make sure that they prioritize. Right. That they have a niche in your team. You shouldn't just pick them up because oh yeah, it has good typing or whatever. Because you're probably not going to yeah, use it, it because you probably have a better mod that can do the same thing it can. Now we can talk about trading. Now trading is interesting because some people are like, no, I love my team. It's good. Um, I don't. I don't need to improve. I think. I think that my team is fine, and I'm just gonna roll with the punches and whatever matchups happen, happen. Um, but I don't think that's a good idea because, as I've said on my channel many times, you if you win a game, if you lose a game, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you you look back and you say, what could I have done better? So same thing in draft league. Every week you should be looking um, at the at the charts with the tiers, and you should see who's made switches, um, and if you can improve your team with um, by trading a mon. So like this week, I'm going to make some trades because um, I think that I haven't brought Verizion, who's four times a week to flying. So I'm going to try and get a different grass type because <laughs> I need yeah. a grass also, type on my team. another important thing about trading is just because you think you have a good team doesn't mean you can't have a better team. True, true. Like one quote that I've used many times is, if I, if I, even if I have a good team, I'm still not going to win. I need to be better than good if I want to win. Right. So... It's always a good idea to just look at what's available. Mm -hmm. Just just evaluate what's available and yeah. make use of it. Like, maybe your team is perfect, which I <laughs> highly doubt. I highly doubt. But <laughs> Nobody's team is perfect. No, no, no team is perfect, and that's why trading is so important. So getting making use out of your trades is essential. However, I wouldn't just play one match, like week one match, and then use all your trades week one. That, yeah, that's yeah. dumb. No, that's dumb. I, I, <laughs> Don't so do that. You, you got to feel your team. What is your team good against? What is your team sh like weak against? Uh, what can you do to improve like your team? So like 
I've seen a lot of teams in draft not have a good attacker, like somebody who can hit hard. Right. So if I'm looking at my team saying, huh, I need somebody who has a high base attack or special attack stat. Right, that's what we're talking about available. with the low tier months. Sometimes the low tier months have like one good stat. So like, um, Buffalon has 110 attack. Uh, what's, uh, Galvantula has 108 speed. So things like that that you can take advantage of that um, they can fill a niche that other mons on your team can't. And sometimes um, when you do trade, you can sometimes swap mons who serve the same role. Like I, I had Urshifu Water on my team and for, for proccing Colossal's weakness policy and Steam Engine. But then I realized it wasn't really good and I could probably get a better tier 1. So I traded for Azumarill who serves the same role but I don't have to spend as an expensive um, piece as, a, as Urshifu Water which is like top tier. So I ended up picking yeah, up Sneasel, Togekiss. Sneasel and Weavile is a great example of this too. Right. They're low tier. Because at first glance, they're if you want good. Weavile, they're, I think they're mid-tier. They're mid-tier, right? yeah. They're like lower yeah, tiers. But, <laughs> but sometimes like Sneasel could be better than Weavile because right. of the ability. Yeah, inner focus. Which, uh, link in yeah, the description. Like, I did I did a video of all the baby mons that are actually better than their evolved mons. Link in the description. <laughs> Shameless yeah. plug. <laughs> yeah, and Sneasel is one of those. Sneasel is for sure on top of that list. Because of uh, its ability, so something right. like let's say you get Weavile, and then like somebody else picks Sneasel, then you pick up Weavile. There are times where other people will be dropping mods that you want to pick up. Mm -hmm. so you got it. That's so, why you got to check every week. Yeah, and that actually happens more frequently than you think. Mm -hmm. That people will drop something and then it's immediately picked back up. Right, for sure. So <laughs> happened like, this week. <laughs> so yeah. it's important to look out for things like that. So like if you can improve. That aspect of your team, go for it. Yeah, so go like for it. Weavile and somebody drops Sneasel, yeah. getting Sneasel over Weavile can be really solid. Right. Or like the if we want to go with the justified user, if what somebody drops Cobalion and you have Rizion, you switch for Cobalion. Yeah, not happening, but okay. <laughs> also, it's good. To, it's good to have a front office that that helps you. Obviously, it's nice to have friends, but at the end of the day, like you're the one who's playing, and you make the you make the uh yeah. you make the decisions, and you you honestly have the best feel of your team. So, no matter what your front office says, <laughs> at front office, <laughs> I I know what I'm playing, and I know how these mods work on the team. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is just a. Uh, I think this will be a uh, part one of three. I think. But yeah, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button, comment what is your uh, favorite draft mon for VGC and or for singles. I don't know, whatever you guys want. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.